I'm going to share with you today five tools that you're going to love if you're a photographer or just someone that loves doing image editing. Luminar Neo offers people some great tools which can make transformations quickly and you also don't need any experience really to use this program. You just kind of just put it on and start using it. It's that simple. Today's video you're going to love. Now to anyone who has watched this channel for a while and has thought, Ben, where have you been for the last month? You've made no videos. I want to say sorry. And I've actually been out because I've had a heart condition, I actually still have a heart condition, on the mend hopefully, but I'm back making videos now for you guys and hopefully you'll enjoy them. Right, without further ado anyway, I just want to get into this video and really show you these tools so that you can benefit from them and use them going forward. So first off, we're going to start with this image right here. And it's a lovely image of a child on their bike. Now, if you've got children like myself, you'll know that you really want to capture those beautiful moments when they're out and about or even in the house and just capture the emotions and really just keep those memories as a keepsake or as a photograph so you can look back and enjoy those moments over and over again. Now, sometimes when you're taking these photos, you don't necessarily take them how you'd hoped or maybe the conditions aren't what you liked. So in this photograph right here, you can see it's a nice image, but one of the issues that I think really stands out is that the child is not separated from the background enough. And you've got this really busy background where you can see all these trees. There's a brilliant tool inside Luminar Neo, which you can use to take care of things like this. And this tool is actually called the Portrait AI tool. You may have already heard of it, but it's so good because it can give you these beautiful blurred backgrounds in your images. And you can do that just with a slider. So you have to come down to the portrait section, which is right here, and then you click on Portrait Bokeh AI. Now, when I apply this tool, you're going to see the change it will make almost straight away. So I'm going to push this up and watch what happens to the background. You can see that it's actually blurred out a big portion of the background. Now, this is not perfect, and that's why there are options and features within inside this tool to make better use of it. So we're gonna show that in a minute. But you imagine for a minute, you've gone out with a lens and then you took a photo, it's not how you want it. And now you have this tool you can use to create these beautiful blurred backgrounds. So with that in mind, let's just show you how you can really dial this in and make it look exactly how you want to. You've got other options here. Now, one of the options I think is really beneficial is depth correction. If I bring this down, watch what happens. You can see I've now changed the depth of the image. So Luminar Neo understands that because of this depth correction slider, I actually want there to be less, or sorry, more depth to the blur in the image. And now you can see I've got this perfect selection of the child, and I'm just applying the blur to the background and not the child. Because of that, we've now got this beautiful separation with this blur. If you can't remember what the first image looked like without the change, you can see it now. This is how it looked, quite busy, it's a beautiful photo still, but now look with the change. It just really makes the subject pop out of the image. Now this is something you'd have to use a lens for at a low aperture number, wide open to get this nice depth of field or this kind of blurry background. But now you don't need to if you don't want to, and if you don't have that kind of lens, you can just make this change inside Luminar Neo. Now, before we move on, I just want to say you've got lots of other options inside this tool. You can change the brightness, you can make it warmer or cooler, you can change the depth correction, of course, and you can almost, sorry, you can also make changes to the actual selection itself. You can do that by, if you want a global change, edges correction, or you can do that with a brush here, and you can make the brush bigger or smaller, and then you can choose to paint in areas where your selection would have actually gone over where you wanted it to. And you can do that right here. In this case, it's made a perfect selection, so we don't need to. The next tool which photographers will love is the Relight AI tool. This is brilliant, I love it. And it's probably my favorite tool inside Luminar Neo currently. Why this tool is so good is because up until this moment, we've been able to increase the exposure or decrease the exposure in your image. But as a whole, the only other way you can do that is by masking and kind of 
bringing in parts of your image, making them brighter and darker separately, which has been very time consuming. And for some people, they don't want that, especially photographers that want to speed up a workflow. The Realight AI tool really takes care of that for you and offers you a solution to the problem. So it fixes this problem that you may have. You've got the brightness near and brightness far sliders. These means that you can change the brightness of the image separately. Let me show you what I mean. If I push the brightness near up, watch what happens. You can see that all that's been applied here is the change to the woman in the image. And that's because she's near in the photograph. Then if I decide to bring the brightness far down to make it darker, you can see that the change has been made to the back of the photograph. So we are changing like light, sorry, in our image, the depth of it independently. And then you can change the depth independently to kind of balance or blend the light together. So if I bring the depth down, you can see it's affecting more of the image, the background. Or if I bring it up, it's bringing more of the image effect in the foreground. That's a fantastic tool. And it's one I use all of the time. You can then go further with this tool and you can make changes to the tone. Also, you can also make the halo changes. So sometimes you get issues with the hair in selections, and then you can just choose to bring this up and it will take care of that for you. You can also bring the warmth near up to affect the warmth of the near of the photo to give it more of an orange or golden look. And then you can do the opposite or the same with the warmth. Ah, you can bring that down and make it more of a cooler tone. And then you can just mess around with these sliders, blending it exactly how you want to. Hopefully you can see how damn good this tool is. And it's one which I use all of the time. If we just go back to that image that we were changing just a minute ago with the portrait bokeh AI, you can see what you can do is actually combine these tools together and then get great results. So we've used Portrait Bokeh AI. Now let's use Relight AI very quickly just to show you how we can use these together. So I'm going to open up the Relight AI tool, brightness near, bring that up, brightness far and bring that down, change the depth, bring the depth down. This is now affecting more of the background up to the foreground. And now I can decide exactly how I want to balance this image. Do I want to make the brightness near a little bit brighter so the child stands out more? So I bring it up a tiny bit. And there we go. You can see that using these two tools together really can give you a lot of power when image editing. And I absolutely love these two tools. I think they work hand in hand really well. And I think a lot of you will really love them. There are two tools that landscape photographers will absolutely adore. These two tools can really help you in lots of different situations. Now, a few years back, I went to the Lake District in England, and it's a beautiful area. It has some glorious countryside, beautiful lakes. And sometimes that area is known for having really bad weather. When I went, it happened to have 50 mile an hour winds, and it just downpoured the whole time. So unfortunately, it spoiled the conditions that I was going for because, you know, it was very difficult to photograph in. I would have really, really appreciated a tool like this to help me out. This is the Sky AI tool. So by using this tool, you can simply drop a sky selection straight into your image. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose something like dramatic sunset. You can see you've got all of your sky options here. This is just one of them though. If you click back here, you've got plenty of others to choose from, all with different selections inside. Um, and let's go ahead and choose one of these. So I'm gonna go for this one here. This will now jump in and replace the sky, as you can see right here, that we had before. And it does a really good job. I mean, that looks almost perfect already, but the tool doesn't stop there. It doesn't just make a really quick sky replacement, but what it does do is it gives you lots of options to fine tune this for yourself. So what you can do is go into sky orientation. You can change the position of the horizon. You can bring that up and down. You can also change the vertical position to make the sky come further down or go further up, further away. And you can also change the horizontal position by bringing it from side to side, taking a piece of sky 
basically where you want it in your image. So I quite like it where it is actually. So I'm gonna probably bring it over here somewhere and leave it about there. Okay, so we've now got our sky where we want it. Now, what can we do to improve it? Well, there are other options. If you have an issue where your sky has gone and is replaced the other sky with, you can make refinements with your mask right here. This is perfect, so we don't need to, so we're gonna leave that for this image. Scenery lighting is one of the best tools inside the sky hour tool. Why? Well, just look, I can relight the scene to match the sky. So bringing that right up, it now matches the color of the sky perfectly well. You can see this really looks completely genuine and actually like there's been no sky replacement at all. You can then add a further change by bringing up the relight saturation and then just changing the saturation of the color to make it look even better. If you've got humans in your image, you've got one here, it's quite far away, you can actually change them as well. So they're really light for the whole scene. And if you have water, this tool is brilliant. You can actually take the sky reflection and put it in the water. Because it'd look quite strange if you didn't have the sky reflection in nice smooth water. And for landscape photographers, again, you'll love this. You can actually add a water blur in. Once again, we have no water, but you can bring this up and it will give you a nice long exposure effect to your water. But taking this a step further, we can then use another tool to enhance even more, and that's the sun rays tool. So you can see this image, it's nice and sunny. Let's say it's a sunset, I think it's a sunset. So now it'd be really nice to kind of have a sun coming over one of these mountains and then really giving it that beautiful end of the day look. We can do that. We can click place a sun center right here. Let's say I wanna place it over here, over the rock. And now what we can do is we can push up the amount and we've got this gorgeous sun effect coming from over this mountain. Now the problem is it doesn't look really realistic right now, so we can use some of the options to change that. So what I can do is I can change the sun ray length, I can bring it down or add more in. So I think I'm gonna put it about here. The overall look, this shows you if it's gonna add more of that kind of bright sunny effect to the whole image or bring it down and make it darker. So I think round about here is quite nice, quite realistic. And penetration gives you more of the effect or less of the effect, as you can see right here, of the sun. Now I quite like it with more of the effect, but I don't like the rays coming all over here. It looks too full on. So then I can go into sun settings. I can change the sun radius to start with, so I can make it smaller or bigger. So I'll make it about there. Then the sun glow radius, I can bring the glow down or enhance it more to give it more of a hazy look. And then the sun glow amount, I can bring that down or push it up. It really gives you a whole plethora of different options at your fingertips. Now this is the option I really wanted to make a change to. I wanna bring the number of rays down so it looks a bit more realistic. There we go, that's looking better. And then you can randomize the ray effects as well so that you can have it showing exactly where you want it to. Just so good, it really is. So I actually quite like it coming across the valley here. There, just lighting up this area. Finally, we can go in to the warmth section. So you can see that this is kind of golden, but maybe you want it more. So you can add warmth to the sun and just add more of a golden look to it to give you that end of the day look. Finally, you can add warmth to your sun rays as well. Fantastic. Finally, when you've actually finished all this, you can actually even move your sun around. So you can make it look like it's just peeking over the top of the mountain there and less an effect. Or you could even grab it and move it over here if you wanted to and make the change so it's actually coming over this mountain. But I would advise doing it wherever the light is in your picture because that's gonna look more realistic. But you do have the power to do that in the image if need be. Now finally, you can bring the amount down or up just to add more of the overall effect and then just fine tune that. But what a tool. This is just another feature to the sky which can really enhance the look of your photos. Now, we're into the final tool of this list. And this one is actually probably the simplest tool out of all of them, but it's just so good for making quick changes. So what I'm gonna do is go into the edit section 
I'm just going to bring this back to revert to original. You can see this is the original image here. And with most of the images, the first thing I do is I start with a tool called Enhance AI. This is a global tool which makes changes to the whole image just using one slider. So look at the image here. Now watch what happens when I bring the slider up. You can see that we just get this beautiful, more punchy and vibrant with more contrast added to the image. And this is such a quick change you can make globally to your image to enhance it. If we have a look at the before, this is it. It's kind of flat and lacks a bit of that something something. And now just with this slider, we've really brought this image to life. To take this further, you can enhance the sky by bringing down the highlights and just showing more of the details in the sky as well. But this is a brilliant tool to start with, and it's the one which has made number five on the list today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video of these five tools, which I think you'll really love, and you should definitely get to grips with them if you haven't already. Now, if you are interested in this software and you haven't got your hands on a copy yet, you should definitely check it out. If you want to, there is a discount link in the description, and this will be great giving you money off on this software if you're interested in using it. So check it out if you want to. I really want to thank you for watching the video today and I hope to be making lots more videos now uh, coming up. So if you're really interested in this kind of thing, photo editing, photography and video, then click that subscribe button. It'll be great to have you on the channel. Guys and ladies, whatever you do for the rest of the day, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.